In this video, I'm going to give you my up-to-date best Quest 3 settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you want to stick around and stay tuned, I'll see you after a quick word from a brand new sponsor to the channel. And look at this. 90 frames per second on the button. I've never, ever experienced this. Every single video on this channel, and that's a lot of videos, is powered by a Stormforce PC. And there's a good reason for that. They are the absolute best in the business. The build quality, the competitive three year warranty, the components are absolutely first class. And as you can imagine, with this channel being all about high resolution VR headsets, complex flight simulators, hours upon hours of video editing, I'm probably the best person to vouch for their reliability. So why don't you go check out their website, configure your dream PC, and you may even get a very nice discount if you follow the link in the description below. So welcome back to the channel and all of your support is much appreciated. So the Quest 3 has hit the shelves and of course it's been a major hit, not just for Beat Saber players but also for the flight sim market. Those pancake lenses are no doubt absolutely gorgeous and I'm really pleased to hear from people that are enjoying the Quest 3 even though you may not have the most highest graphics card on the market. So what I've done with this video is bring back my 3070 Ti machine and compare it and get the best settings that I possibly can run with that as well as my 4090 and I'm going to give you both of my settings and please just you know use these as a guide they're not the absolute like exact settings that you need for your system since there's thousands of different configurations out there but with that being said let's get straight into the settings starting with Microsoft Flight Simulator itself so let's start here in the VR menu as you can see these are my 4090 settings now I prefer TAA mode simply because that is the best chance you're going to get for high clarity. I'd recommend even with a high power computer to be careful with ambient occlusion, taking that to medium, making sure clouds are set to high because I do feel ultra is still a heavy hitter and LOD, that's your level of detail. Honestly, that is probably the biggest heavy hitting setting that you can find in the sim. So keep that down to around 120 if I were you. Also object level detail, I've just pushed up to 160 but that does hamper performance but I must admit it does help um, just keep some of those aircraft a bit sharper in the distance. Unfortunately things like contact shadows and terrain shadows are still heavy hitters as is ray march reflections. Keep them quite low or even off. Honestly it's not worth those dips in frames because it does create stutters. Now for those of you who really like VFR touring and you use steam gauges, DLSS is definitely the way to go and use DirectX 12 for DLSS. It makes a big difference to performance. However, for TAA mode, keep it DirectX 11. I find it gives you the best um, performance levels and with GPU scheduling turned on. That's right folks. I think it works really well for the MetaQuest 3. However, your mileage might vary. Oh, thank you, Melissa. She's just brought me some chocolate and a cup of tea, and we need it for this video because it's all hands on deck. Thank you very much. So as you can see here, these are my settings for my 3070 Ti. I'm so sorry it's taking me so long, but of course, I'm using that computer for other things these days, like recording bands, actually. So I had to completely like format the hard drive, reinstall MSFS, and start to do a bit of testing and actually I was really surprised with how well the Quest 3 runs even on a 3070 Ti. So absolutely that is fantastic news. However please bear in mind to turn those settings down. Whether you use a 4090 or a 2080 Ti you've got to make sure that you tune your system and stress test it in a good area like London City. I'd highly recommend it. So feel free to copy those settings and use them as a guide. Now the wonderful thing about the Quest 3 is you can use it wirelessly but for this first settings tip I'm going to focus on link cable because I actually quite enjoy using link with 80 hertz mode simply because it gives your computer a lot less of a target to reach. 
and 80 hertz could mean 40 frames per second either motion reprojection or locked at 40 frames per second which we'll do later on so i would recommend using the oculus debug tool to boost the bitrate up to a crazy 940 mbps or perhaps 800 which i i'm using now actually it seems to be a little bit more stable but you cannot uh, input that into the oculus debug tool you have to copy and paste it into a notepad first and then paste it in also link sharpening i do find that using it on quality makes a nice difference and honestly with 80 hertz mode with my 4090 i find link absolutely fantastic and i do actually quite enjoy using uh, asynchronous space warp especially as it does give me a solid 40 frames per second with the settings i've just shown you with my 4090 base system However, feel free to, again, play around. I'm going to say that a lot in this video because, you know, every system on the planet is different. It's just the way it is, guys. Like, I've got two Fender Strats, okay? They're both exactly the same. Yeah, I know it's a bit weird having two guitars that are the same. But actually, they play completely differently. I think it's the same when it comes to computers as well. And cars, weirdly. Now, you may be wondering, why am I not super sampling the headset in the Oculus app? That is because I prefer to do it in the OpenXR toolkit using the override tool. And that is simply because I do use my Quest 3 for a manner of different things. And I don't really want that high super sampling in all of my games and sims. So what I'm using right now is, you can probably just see this, it's a bit blurry, sorry folks. It's 3506 by 3789 and I do find that I need either that resolution or even higher to get to the point where I feel it is as sharp as a Riva G2. Thankfully, of course, with the Quest 3, you get those wonderful pancake lenses. So it's the entire view, which is just superb. But you do need to do that. This is where things get a bit sticky with my 3070 Ti. I cannot sort of um, super sample it quite that high. However, I am surprised what I can get away with. And um, actually, with a bit of tweaking, you will find that actually 3080, 3080 Ti can run the Quest 3 pretty good considering. Now, another thing I would recommend, especially if you're not so keen on using asynchronous space warp, is locking your frame rate to half of that of the refresh rate. So you could even go down as low as um, 36 frames per second in 72 hertz mode. I haven't tried that myself, but I would recommend 80 hertz and a locked 40 frames per second. You can also do that in the OpenXR toolkit, as you can see here. Although this is actually a different headset I'm showing now, but it's the same principle. Lock it down to whatever is the half of your refresh rate. It's not quite as good as 80 frames per second or motion reprojection when it works correctly, but I think it's less buggy and I'm starting to use that more and more. It's very, very cool. So highly recommended, give that a go. Anyway, we're now going to look at virtual desktop. Now, there's been some huge improvements to virtual desktop thanks to Matt, the OpenXR toolkit genius, in collaboration with Guy from Virtual Desktop App. It means now that we can use OpenXR and get rid of SteamVR, which is essentially the middleman, as I like to call it, which will definitely boost performance and overall stability. So if you'd like to know how to install a virtual desktop and you don't know much about it, well, actually, I'm not going to go over that here. It's beyond the scope of this video. And in any case, Mark from the Sim Hanger has made a fantastic video explaining how to get it up and running. So I'll link his video in the description below. Please do give it a watch and give him plenty of subscribes and likes and all that kind of thing, because he's quite honestly the best YouTuber out there for his flight simmers. Anyway, let's just have a look at the desktop streamer app. You definitely need that set to VDXR. And thanks to the clever technology in the Quest 3 now, we can use the AV1 10-bit codec, which I feel does make a very nice difference to the visual fidelity. You can also play around with all of the other codecs. And actually, I do find the HEVC 10-bit is pretty good as well. But for me personally, I think the AV1 10-bit is the one I prefer. That is all you need in terms of the settings for virtual desktop. Make sure it's on VDXR. That way, SteamVR will not run, which is a good thing. <laughs> and then for our last part of this settings tutorial for virtual desktop, 
we're going to look at my settings. Now, this will change depending on your network as well. Keep that in mind. And I would recommend that you have a Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz connection and preferably a Wi-Fi 6 router. The faster connection, the better, basically. And actually, my internet isn't very good at all, but uh, I still get a pretty reasonable result. As you can see here, I'm using a bit rate of no more than 120, otherwise you will get uh, latency and you will actually induce stutters if you go too crazy with that. Also, again, as you can see, I'm using 80 hertz. I find that a very nice sweet spot. Um, sharpening at 75%, that is a bit high, admittedly. Some people won't like that, but I need that sharpness to get to that level of the Reva G2. When it comes to asynchronous space warp, I would recommend either using it disable first, in fact, you'll actually get a bit more clarity that way as well. And locking in the OpenXR toolkit, like I mentioned before. But if you do want to use um, asynchronous space warp, keep it on always enabled. That will save you um, some stutters when it keeps going on and off. I also have the Snapdragon sharpening enabled and video buffering enabled and enhanced colors. I do find it looks a lot better than when compared to um, Airlink, which actually I don't really recommend Airlink at this time. So really, my personal view at the moment is that virtual desktop is probably the most likely way to go because you get all the convenience and benefits of being completely free uh, from a wire and people think well why why would you want to do that you're sat down well trust me in a motion rig when you're getting thrown around it's actually quite nice not to have a uh, cable hanging out your head <laughs> oh by the way these are my settings for desktop again feel free to copy them if you wish but yeah i think it's worth saying again and again that you know, for MSFS, for high-end PC VR, it really is, in my opinion, the best way to go, if you can afford it, is the Varia Aero and the Pimax Crystal and Big Screen Beyond. I appreciate, though, these headsets are extremely expensive. But the Quest 3 does a very, very good job of bringing high-end PC VR at a decent price. And now that we can deduct... 30 series graphics cards can also benefit. This is becoming quite a phenomenal headset. Although, I've got to say it folks, I can't help but think what this headset would be like with a display port. Perhaps we'll see something like this from the PK5 in the future. Anyway folks, that's it for me. I'll try to keep this as quick and concise as possible. I'm no expert on VR settings. I, people seem to think I am, but I really am not. And I'm just showing you what works for me. If you've got anything that works for you and you want to comment in the description below, I'd really appreciate it. Let's help each other out. And as soon as things change, I will update this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.